Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to be here, Lord. We you speak to our hearts today, Lord. We you help me say all that we have to say, Lord, and nothing else. You know, we live in a world today where a lot of people have a, a wrong view of love. Uh, we hear all the time about self-love and uh, do what you think is best and be you. But a lot of the people that are quote unquote promoting love and promoting being yourself, they're just promoting you doing what feels good. And a lot of times, true love does not feel good. Because love is putting the benefit of someone else above yourself. Right. And a lot of times, true love is not, is not going to be a super comfortable thing. It's not, it's not something that's always just going to feel good and feel great. And it's going to make you happy, so to speak. But it's what's best for you. We've seen this first, uh, the first part of this. It says, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's every part of you. We love God with our flesh, our spirit, and our soul. We love God with every single part of us. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 19, it says we love him because he first loved us. The reason we love God is because he loved us. That's right. He sent his son to die for us so that we could be saved. We'll get, uh, we'll get Romans 8. Romans 8. Start reading verse 32. It says, He has spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God who justifies him. Who is he to condemn him? It is Christ who died, yea, rather, and has risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make his intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors for him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And God loved us so much, he sent us son to die for us. You know, and he didn't have to do that. God chose to send him to die for us, knowing that we were sinful, knowing that we were dead in our trespasses and sin. The Bible says that or, the Bible says that God sent his son to die for us while we were his enemies. You know, and God loved us even when we didn't love him back. And God's love is, is powerful and it's never ending. Since God loved us enough to send his son, we ought to love him. Yes. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, God gave us his word, his commandments, to teach us how to love him and how to love him. <clears throat> Everything that God told us to do in his word is for his glory and the, for the benefit of us and others. Every commandment that God gives is to keep us from hurting ourselves, from hurting others, and to bring glory to him. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, we call the glory of God. So how we love God is to seek everything we do to bring Him glory. To put His desires above our desires. To put His uh, plans above our plans. Keep Him first in all that we do. You know, and as we love God, He will teach us to love others. So look at 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Verse 10. It says, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. 
Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Mm. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own words were evil, and his brother was righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brother. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby receive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. For whoso hath this world's good, and seeth, seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how well the love of God in him. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. As we love God, he will instill in us a desire, and He will work through us a love for others. Sure. God doesn't just work in our heart and show us His love so that we can keep it for ourselves. He does a work in us so that we can love others, so that He can show His love through us. You know, and if we see our, our brothers and sisters struggling, and they need help, and we're not willing to help them, then do we truly love them? You know, the world a lot of times, as I was saying, they'll say, oh, do what makes you feel good. But, you know, sometimes the things that make you feel good are not what's best for you. Sometimes you need to encourage people and, and help guide them away from things sometimes sure. that may feel good, but that are good for them. Let's look at chapter 4 of 1 John, uh, verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God loveth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God yeah. in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. He is, so we are, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth does not make perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. A man say, I love God, and hated his brother, and he is a liar. But he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment hath given him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. You know, we see here, it says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believe the love God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. The greatest way for us to love others is to, to tell them about Christ, and to tell them about his love for us. And again, as I was saying, sometimes that can be uncomfortable, that can be a hard situation, but we need to be telling people that they are sinners, but that Jesus died to save them. And that is the greatest way we can love others. The last thing I see in our text, and, uh, as Pastor likes to say, here now before you come now, we do need to love ourselves. Back in Matthew, Second and like unto 
to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? Sure. Again, as we've said, love is not what feels good. Right. And if you love yourself, you're doing what's best for yourself. You're not eating five pieces of cake at a time. You're not... You're going to the gym and working out. You're reading your Bible every day. Amen. You're spending time with God. You're praying. That is loving yourself. Doing the things you need to do to take care of yourself. Right. And as I think about that, I believe you have to love yourself in order to be able to love others. How can you help others? That's good. How can you do, take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself? That's good, bro. Excellent. Excellent. So what is the, the opposite of love? I believe the opposite of love would be pride. Let's go to Mark 8. Mark 8, verse 11. So when the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, and seeking of him a sign from heaven and tempting him. And he sighed deeply in spirit and said, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entering into the ship again and departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they any ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of Herod. Now, if you look in one of the other passages, and one of the other Gospels, when it uh, has this passage in it, it says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And I believe that the main reason for hypocrisy would be pride. And we get, pride causes us to get hypercritical. It causes us to to look at people and, and try to point out things that yeah. are wrong in them rather than saying the things in ourselves. Come on, come on, come on, it's good. Let's look at Mark 9, verse 33 through 39. It says, But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savest all Christ. That's chapter 8. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they disputed among themselves, who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, and the servant of all. And he took a child, and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in, in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such... Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw him casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbade him, because he followed not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man that shall do a miracle in my name, that he might be speak evil of me. We see here that the disciples were disputing who was going to be the greatest. Right? Who's going to have the highest position? Who's going to be the best? We see the pride in our hearts. And when God, God takes a little child and, and He uses the child as an example. He says, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. Whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And He also says that he that is least shall be. Uh, you see, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be the last of all, and serve them all. So we see as we seek to help others, as we seek to serve others, as we seek not to glorify ourselves, but to be an encouragement to others, that is love. And as we saw, sorry, as we saw talking about leaven, you know, I looked into leaven, and one thing that can negate the effects of leaven is salt. If you add enough salt to bread, then the leaven will not work as it should. True. And if you look in the next few verses here, verse 38, if you don't it says, And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbade him because he followed not us. Now earlier the disciples had been trying to cast out a demon, 
and they could. And I believe part of the reason why they forbade him is because they were thinking, well, if we couldn't do it, surely he can. We're Jesus' disciples. If, if we can't cast out devils, he must be doing something wrong. So they forbade him. And we see that Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man who shall do a miracle in my name that can likely speak evil of him. And he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, very next day in you, you shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone will hang about his neck, and will cast into the sea. And if I hand a penny cut it off, it is better for thee to me. It's better for thee to enter into life main and have it through the hands to go into hell, and the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if I put a penny for a dog, it's better for thee to enter into halt in the life and have it through your feet to be cast into hell, and the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if I, I offend thee, pluck it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. For their one dieth not, and the fire is not punished. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost the saltiness, where will you be? Yeah. Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. So as we looked at the, uh, the passage speaking of leaven, everything between that and here, or much of it, deals a lot with pride and with hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe that this is Jesus giving us the answer to that. As I said, leaven, if you put salt, if you put leaven in bread, and then if you put a lot of salt in it, it negates the effects of the leaven. It says here that for everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. And if we look, if we will take time to reflect on our, our own issue. Yeah. Think about the things in our life that we need to change, that we need to fix. 